they are all in some way interconnected as well. But in June, the IMF did a financial stability report and they looked at the different countries. And when they got to Germany, they said that Deutsche Bank appears to be the most important net contributor to systemic risks. Okay, so of all the banks on the planet, Deutsche Bank is the riskiest. A couple days later, the, Fed, the Federal Reserve came out with its stress tests. Now, you have to understand that the whole point of the stress tests is for you to have confidence in the bank. See, they passed these little tests. So these tests were created to be reasonably easily passed. And they failed again. So now you have the riskiest bank that has had trouble not once, but twice passing the stress tests. What could go wrong? But it should be clear that they are the biggest threat to the global financial system. Now, we need to see why the IMF and the Federal Reserve is designating Deutsche Bank as the riskiest bank on the planet. So let's go right to the horse's mouth, their most current annual financial statement. And I say this in all honesty, let us pray. Before we dig into it though, it is really important for you to understand what leverage is. And, you know, who hasn't at Christmas time, who hasn't watched It's a Wonderful Life? And you remember when George Bailey was on his way to his honeymoon and the bank, there was a run on the bank. And he used his honeymoon money to recapitalize the bank and reduce its leverage. And that's because the normal way that banks make their profit is the difference between what they pay their depositors, who are actually loaning them money, and what they get in interest from the loans they make from those depositors. We are in a fractional reserve system. So long as not everybody wants their money back at the same time, this is not a problem, okay? Now, normal leverage at that point was 10 to 1. So for every $1 that they took in, they could loan 10 times that amount out. Okay, really simply put, that's leverage. Now, let's look at how Deutsche Bank is leveraged. All right, now the leverage ratio indicates a level of vulnerability. The lower the ratio, the higher the leverage. Now, when I first looked at this, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. They have a 3.5 leverage ratio. That seems like it's pretty low. But I remembered them discussing the fact that Deutsche Bank was as leveraged as Lehman was, or near there, when they went out. So I dug around and I found the formula to translate the leverage ratio into the leverage rate. And let me show you that. A 3.5 leverage ratio is a 29 to 1 leverage rate. And what that really means is that they went out and borrowed $29 to generate $1 in equity capital. So they borrowed and they bought real estate or derivatives or whatever it is that they bought, 29 to generate 1. That's a lot. But beyond that, prior to 2004, regulations mandated in the U.S. that the maximum leverage rate was 12 to 1. Of course, then Citi, Goldman, J.P. Morgan, all these guys went in and they negotiated a loosening up of those leverage rates. And this is not really a problem as long as the assets continue to appreciate and your income increases to cover all of the new debts that they're taking on. But what happens when your income drops? Well, you take on even more debt to make up for that shortfall. Okay, well, what happens when prices drop? 
Well, at a 29 to 1 leverage rate, a 3 to 4% decline in asset prices, boom, it wipes out all equity. And you are insolvent when your debt levels exceed your equity. And frankly, you know, this could be a very good reason why it's so important for this set, one of the reasons that the central bankers need to keep the stock market, the bond market, and the real estate market elevated because Deutsche Bank is not alone in this leverage. We're just looking at them specifically. But how about that income to cover all the new debts that they've taken on? Well, this is out of the annual report. It goes back to 2011, and the trend of their income should be pretty apparent from that. Okay, well, how about currently? Now, this is out of their annual report, and I quote, second quarter net income fell 98% from a year earlier hurt by weaker performances in trading, investment banking, and other core areas. So this bar graph actually easily shows that their income is collapsing. Well, hopefully their costs are too, but oops, no, their costs remain stubbornly high. Hmm. Why? Let's see if we can answer that question. Going back to that IMF report, oh, what does this say? Uh, let's see, repeated fines for what? Oh, systematic manipulation of benchmarks. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Along with, actually this is really small, I'm having trouble reading it, but along with misleading regulators, good idea. So when the regulators discovered that they were manipulating the benchmarks and they had to mislead them, I guess you'd say lie to them, so they didn't know it. And then on top of that, they violated U.S. sanctions. Oh my goodness, how interesting in that. In fact, there are over 7,000 separate litigations and regulatory actions against Deutsche Bank. Over 7,000. Hmm. This could be why the IMS says that they have some corporate governance issues because what that really means is that the corporate culture lacks both ethics and probably more importantly, frankly, for where we are in the whole scheme of things, judgment. Okay, Because they were caught at least 7,000 times. And they've probably performed other things, but they were caught. That means that they made mistakes. Just kind of keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, at that point, they had put 5.5 billion euros aside to handle all these litigations and fines. You think that'd be enough? No, not at all. So at the most current count, they have set aside over 12 billion euros for the litigations and the fines. All right, well, what does Deutsche Bank say about this themselves? Okay, well, these litigations and fines could definitely push them over the brink. They may not be able to restructure because of these mounting costs. That's what they say. But again, what I really want you to think about is that they made at least 7,000 misjudgments and mistakes. And they are, taught, they are teetering on the brink of collapse. Do you think there's a possibility that they might just make another mistake that could push them over the edge? <laughs>